Welcome to This Week in Orthodoxy, the world's only online video newscast focused on events in the life of the Orthodox Church. I'm Mandy Luveris. These are some of the stories making headlines this week. Hellenic College Holy Cross is celebrating its name day. The Pistevo film is inspiring the faithful. Memorial for the Turkish 1955 pogrom and the Syrian Orthodox Patriarch talks refugee crisis during his visit to Laval, Canada. First up from Brookline, Massachusetts, the Hellenic College Holy Cross community will be celebrating its name day on Monday, September 14th, the occasion of the elevation of the Holy Cross. Included in the day's agenda is a convocation open to the entire community where Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Klepsis, Archbishop Iakovos, Professor of the Orthodox Theology and Professor of Dogmatics, will offer the address entitled Human Rights and Orthodoxy. Father Klapsis has taught at Holy Cross since 1985, specializing from dogmatics to courses that relate to Orthodox theology with modern and postmodern sensibilities. For more on upcoming events, log on to hchc.edu. And next up, Pistevo, a stunning 17-minute film packed with vivid imagery depicting the life of Jesus Christ and his saints, was created to inspire the faithful. The epic short film directed by Mark Brody and written and produced by Taryn Grimes Herbert expresses why we honor the traditions of our theology and share our spiritual experience with the Orthodox world. The independent documentary depicts a community coming together to complete the centuries-old mission of iconography led by Father Elias Vilis at the Greek Orthodox Church of Our Savior in Rye, New York. This extraordinary story needed to be told. We witnessed the transformation of our community through the ministry of iconography and stand as witness to the power of faith. Iconography is Greek for ikonografo, writing with images. So essentially iconography is the written gospel. When you see a saint, you see the life of Christ in that saint. When you see obviously the life of Christ throughout the church, you'll see images from his life, whether it be the baptism, the resurrection, the crucifixion, the Last Supper, you can see that throughout this church. Particularly on the ground level, we are surrounded by saints of the church that lived throughout the history of the church that suffered either a martyrdom or preached the gospel or lived in areas of persecution. So we have all these images surrounding us and then you have the church on earth. It's, it's referred to as the church triumphant, those who are in heaven, surrounding the church militant, the church on earth, and that's us. So we have this incredible support of examples telling us essentially, we're with you. You can do this. Keep going. At the Orthodox Christian Network, we remain inspired by Pistevo, meaning I believe and invite you to watch it on myocn.net. Iconography remains a spiritually powerful part of the Orthodox Christian theology. For many, the images enhance one's ability to go deeper into the exploration and appreciation of their faith. And next from Ankara, the first ever memorial service to be performed in commemoration of what became known in Turkey as the events of September 6th and 7th was held on September 6th at Istanbul's Panagia Greek Orthodox Church. Sixty years after the fact, it was in memory of the victims of the 1955 pogrom targeting the Greeks of Istanbul known as Polites, short for Konstantinopolites. On that day, the Greek community and Hellenism of Constantinople was delivered a fatal blow in seven hours in the planning for some years and masterfully carried out by the Turkish government, 71 churches, 41 schools, eight newspapers, more than 4,000 stores, and 2,000 residences were looted or destroyed overnight. The human toll and suffering were even more catastrophic, with more than 30 dead, 300 injured, and 400 raped. As one Greek Orthodox community leader recently argued, the greatest damage was to the ideal of equal citizenship in Turkey, not only for the polites, but also for the country's other non-Muslim minorities. The 1955 pogrom 
was not a clash of civilizations pitting Muslims against Christians. On the contrary, amid rising Turkish-Greek tension over the future status of the then British colony of Cyprus, the riots were carefully planned by the Turkish government to cleanse Istanbul of the approximately 100,000 politis who were excluded from the Turkish-Greek population exchange of the 1920s. The 1955 pogrom targeting the politis has not been part of Turkish school curricula. Turkey's Greek Orthodox families refrain from discussing the issue, even in the privacy of their own homes as the walls have ears, they would say. Fortunately, new generations and the time seems to be changing. In an era of vastly expanding communication, the state is no longer capable of keeping a lid on the country's past secrets. Turkey now has a plethora of organizations and initiatives dedicated to uncovering past atrocities and making amends with persecuted minorities, whether Armenians, Greeks, Syriacs, Jews, or the Alevis. For example, last year, a blogger was able to make 210 photos of the 1955 pogrom available online, graphically conveying the savagery and atrocities to wide audiences better than any written text could do. While 10 years ago, a gallery showing some of those same images was attacked. Grassroots enthusiasm for equal citizenship and pluralism in Turkey is indeed praiseworthy, However, it is still the government's responsibility to move things forward so that events like the 1955 pogrom are never repeated again. And lastly from Canada, as the world tries to figure out how to respond to the millions of Syrian refugees fleeing war and strife, more Ignatius Ephraim II, patriarch of the Syriac Orthodox Church, called for the international community to work together towards a peaceful resolution to the conflict in Syria at a press conference held in Laval, Canada. The world should unite in order to defeat terrorism and to restore peace to Syria, to Iraq and to the entire region, he said. I'm saddened by the fact that it took the photo of a young boy floating on the shore to draw the attention of the world to the huge crisis for refugees. He continued by emphasizing that Canada, made up largely of immigrants and refugees, should take its place in receiving the refugees and allowing them to settle somewhere, taking on as much as the Canadian society can absorb. The photo of a three-year-old Syrian boy lying lifeless on a beach in Turkey brought the Syrian refugee crisis to the forefront of the Canadian consciousness this week because the child's uncle had applied to be sponsored and come to Canada. However, the forms were returned because they were incomplete. The press conference was the final stop in the Patriarch's tour of Canada, which began in August. He held a mass at the Saint-Jacques Syriac Orthodox Church and met with the local community in Sherbrooke, which has now sponsored 275 Syrian refugee families to settle in the area. And in news from OCN, we're proud to announce the recipient of the 2015 OCN Hero Award, Father Christos Christakis, pastor of the Hellenic Orthodox Church of the Annunciation in Buffalo, New York. A quote from the nominator helps to see why Father Christos was voted OCN's Hero for 2015. Father Christos's influence and leadership has helped me to return to my faith. His priorities are clearly and constantly stated. His love for our Creator, the Lord Jesus Christ and His Church, assisting His flock in becoming closer to what our Lord wants us to be, faithful and striving Christians who love our fellow man and avoid the pitfalls of modern secular life. But what sets him apart from perhaps so many others who strive and struggle for the Lord is his patience and humble, quiet ways. A big thank you goes out to everyone who voted on behalf of Father Christos and the other four amazing individuals helping to highlight some of the great work being carried out for the Orthodox Christian faith. And here at OCN, we've been highlighting the Orthodox Christian faith through media for over 20 years and breaking down communication barriers while building up avenues connecting Orthodox Christians worldwide. Be a part of our growth and consider making a contribution in support of our global media outreach efforts by being a part of our OCN Tencent movement. 
For just 10 cents a day, you can comfort, inspire, and inform people all over the world. And remember, you can access the many breaking stories, blogs, podcasts, and videos available on the latest topics of interest on myocn.net, on our Facebook page, or watch us on our YouTube OCN video channel. And that brings another edition of This Week in Orthodoxy to a close. For everyone here in our OCN studios, I'm Emily Luveris. Let's go forth in peace.